So in this video, I'm going to show you the number one distance control killer in putting. This is something that I've established over my 38 years as a golf coach and well over 50 years of playing golf. And I see it so many times. People have the concept totally back to front of what they should be doing. So this is a video that I know is going to help you. So we're gonna start by, I'm gonna ask you, at what point do you think the putter needs to be traveling at its fastest point during the putting stroke? So do we want the putter accelerating through the ball? So if that's the case, your fastest point of the putting stroke is going to be beyond impact. Or do we actually want the fastest point of the putting stroke to be at impact? So I see so many people thinking the first one, that you want to accelerate through the ball. That's the reason most people have poor distance control when they putt. We actually want the putter to be traveling at its fastest point at the point of contact. And if you can do that, you're gonna be a better putter. So the, what I want you to imagine is that you're driving along in a car and it's going 20 kilometers per hour if you're in miles, it's okay, it doesn't really matter. You can think 20 miles an hour if you'd like to. But we haven't got our foot on the accelerator, we haven't got our foot on the brake. It's just traveling at 20 miles or kilometers per hour. What happens to the car if it hits a garbage bin? It's going to slow down. If you put the foot on the accelerator, it will speed up and it might move the garbage bin out of the way and you keep going. If there is a collision between the car and the garbage bin, it's going to slow the car down. So that's pretty much what happens during the course of a putting stroke, is we have this collision between the putter and the ball. And the moment there is a collision, the putter starts to slow down. What we don't want to do is compensate for that and accelerate. So the first thing I want you to practice is that when we putt without a ball we want to maintain our tempo all the way through but the length of the backswing and the length of the follow-through should be the same we could call that symmetrical if we wanted to so it's really the same length back and the same length through when the ball gets struck however it's going to slow down the putt we're not decelerating, but due to the collision between the face of the, the putter and the ball, the club starts slowing down. So without a ball, it's the same length back and through. With a ball, we actually have a shorter follow through. Yet what I see the average golfer do is they take the putter back low and slow, and then they have a massive acceleration and they have a big follow through. And that can work, I've just hit a half decent putt. But what won't, it won't work under pressure and it won't work consistently. And what I did there is I actually topped the putt. Because I was taking it back low and slow and I started accelerating, my putter was rising too much and I've actually hit above the equator of the ball, which has actually killed the distance. And how many times have you been out on the course and you've hit a putt and you think, wow, I feel like I smashed that and it hasn't even got to the hole. That's what's happening. So the next putt you, you then go and do and you, you think, oh, I've got to hit this harder. And all you're doing is you're then hitting lower on the ball and all of a sudden the ball goes another eight foot past. And you think, that didn't feel like I hit it that far past. That's because you've got it all wrong. And I said at the start of the video, You've got to do the opposite to what, to what you're currently doing. So what I want you to think of is that it's actually the backswing that's controlling the distance that you hit it. And we want what I have, what I describe as dead acceleration. It's not deceleration, but due to the impact of the putter colliding with the ball, the putter slows down, so it's dead acceleration. So I could put a tee in the ground there and I'm going to have a go at hitting a putt 
And my thought here is that no matter what my length of backswing, I want to follow through roughly toward that T. Now in doing that, I then de I did decelerate. I really stopped on it and I didn't even get to the T. That's come up well short. So we don't want that one. The one that we want is dead acceleration. So that's something like that. And the ball just rolls beautifully end over end and it's really good distance control. So it takes a little bit of work, but within a couple of minutes, you should start to get a bit of a feel. So it's not an exact rule of thumb, but you could think, well, my follow through is going to be about one third of my backswing. So that's a rough guide. It's not exact, but it's just a rough guide. But we, as I said, we don't want to decelerate. It's dead acceleration. So it's length of the backswing. And then we come through and you can see there that I'm hitting the ball a really nice distance around the hole. Now, if you can start to do that and do it from various different spots, but the whole key is we're trying not to do what most people do, short backswing, big follow through. We're trying to have a bigger backswing and we want dead acceleration. We don't want it to decelerate, it's dead acceleration. And there is a fine line between it. But if you can start working and hitting a lot of putts from different lengths, just feeling this dead acceleration. And you can see there the ball's going a nice distance past and I'm starting to get consistent. So, Really work hard on that. Get out in the putting green, get in the hallway at home. Putting something you can do at home. I've even got a putting training course for home that you know, I think is well worthwhile. It's two hours of videos, over 50 videos, all detailing the different aspects of putting. And I'll put a link at the end of this video and uh, to download it, but it's, it's a real home training program. So if you think about it, if you have a putting mat and some balls, how long would it take you to get bored? Three minutes at the, at the, at the, at the least. <laughs> so what I've done in this video is basically it's, it's a template on how you can practice your putting on a putting mat at home. I filmed it in my kitchen. So I don't have a facility. It's just a six foot putting mat in my kitchen and it's a well worthwhile uh, little training course. So I'll pop a link in the description and I'll also put a, a link to another video just down there of how you can improve your putting.